danger. SpeedNet cell edge gateways operate between 9 and 60 volts DC. Failure to observe the precautions below will result in serious personal injury or death. Some of these precautions may differ from your company's operating procedures and rules. Where a discrepancy exists, follow your company's operating procedures and rules. This video is intended to be used in conjunction with SNC Instruction Sheet 1076-530. The SpeedNet Cell Edge Gateway allows utilities to use cellular networks already in service to provide flexible, cost-effective monitoring and control of automation devices. This video will cover all the steps needed to configure the gateway for use in an automation network, including network design, pre-installation steps, configuring the gateway for operation, and testing the automation network. Whether you have a few devices on a single feeder or a complex configuration, SNC recommends designing your automation network and gathering all necessary information before installing hardware in the field. Additional information about network design can be found in SNC Instruction Sheet 1076-530. We will be using this system, consisting of three Intelliruptor Pulse Closer Fault Interrupters and a PC for remote connections as an example. In our example, we'll demonstrate use of the cellular network as a primary network for Intelliruptor Pulse Closer Fault Interrupter Monitoring and Control. We'll also show use of the cellular network in conjunction with a private field area network constructed using SpeedNet radios. We'll configure the gateway to operate in the VPN network interface mode using OpenVPN for the VPN configuration. Before leaving to install SpeedNet gateways in the field, carry out the following pre-installation steps. Step 1. Contact the cellular service provider for the cellular network selected and establish cellular service. Obtain a SIM card for each gateway. The network interface mode selected during network design determines whether the SIM cards obtained should have dynamic or fixed IP addresses. In our example, SIM cards with dynamic IP address are required. Step 2. For each gateway to be used on the cellular network, select a unique IP address. Step 3. Because Intelliruptor Pulse Closer Fault Interrupters have their gateways factory installed and wired, we use the subnet of the gateway's IP address to assign a unique IP address to each Intelliruptor Fault Interrupter. Optionally, when using the cellular network in conjunction with a SpeedNet radio network, use the subnet to assign a unique IP address to each radio. Step 4. Obtain the default username and passwords required for setup. All SpeedNet gateways are shipped with the same default username and password. For SNC hardware, these can be requested from SNC by calling the Global Support and Monitoring Center at the number on page 5 of Instruction Sheet 1076-530 or by contacting SNC through the SNC Customer Portal at snc.com. Step 5. Configure the VPN server for connections with the gateways and collect information and files from the VPN server required for gateway configuration. For example, when using an open VPN server, the following information should be collected. The public IP address, the private IP address of the tunnel endpoint of the server, and the cipher, digest, and optionally, TLS security. You'll also need to collect the following files. The certificate authority certificate, the gateway device certificate, and the gateway device private key for each gateway to be configured, and optionally, the TLS authorization key. Those in your organization responsible for information technology can provide detailed information on VPN server files and configuration. After installation of hardware in the field, a check of gateway communication and private wireless network device communication, if applicable, is recommended. When the gateway is configured for the VPN network interface mode, it communicates over a virtual network. Carry out the following steps to configure the gateway for VPN mode. Repeat the steps for all gateways connected to the cellular network. We'll show the steps for configuring this gateway. 
VPN mode is configured in the SpeedNet Cell Edge Gateway Configuration Tool, which is accessed via a web browser. You will need access to the gateway's Ethernet ports. Step 1. Following the instructions in the manufacturer's documentation for your automation device, access the gateway. In this example, using the Intelleruptor Pulse Closer Fault Interrupter, it is located in the Communications module. If required, install the gateway's SIM card as instructed on page 7 of SNC Instruction Sheet 1076-510. Step 2. Connect a 9 to 60 volts DC power supply to the gateway's power connector. Wait for the heartbeat LED to indicate that boot up initialization is complete. A full description of the operation of the gateway's LEDs can be found on page 8 of SNC's instruction sheet 1076 510. Connect a PC to the Ethernet 1 port. If configuring a gateway for a system where the cellular network is used in conjunction with a SpeedNet radio network, this will require first removing the Ethernet cable that is connected to the port. The properties of the Internet Protocol version 4 item of the PC port connected to the gateway must be configured to have an IP address on the 192.168.1 subnet. This can be done by changing the adapter settings on the PC. Once the adapter settings are correct, launch a web browser and navigate to 192.168.1.1 in the address field. The login screen will appear. Fill in the username and password and click the login button. For specific details on the SpeedNet Cell Edge Gateway Configuration Tool, see SNC Instruction Sheet 1076-530. Step 3. After login, the configuration tool will open on the dashboard screen. If the cellular information has not already been configured through the wireless tab, access the cellular information screen and enter the APN and the operator for the cellular network. Step 4. If the APN and operator were entered in the previous step, then through the System tab, access the general settings and reboot the gateway. Once the gateway is rebooted, log in to the gateway once again. Step 5. Use the Cell section of the Dashboard tab to confirm that the status of the gateway's cellular modem is enabled. Step 6. If configuring a gateway for a system where the cellular network is used in conjunction with a SpeedNet radio network, skip to the next step. Otherwise, through the Wired tab, access the Ethernet 2 screen, then change the IP address by entering the IP address assigned to the gateway in the IP address box. Step 7. VPN can be configured to use Layer 2 tunneling protocol or open VPN. Either can be selected on the VPN configuration screen found under the Network tab. Using the information and files collected during the VPN server configuration, enter the data in the fields on the page, then open the VPN server files in a text editor such as Notepad. Copy the text in the file and paste it in the appropriate field. Because our VPN server uses the optional TLS authorization key, the TA key data is entered. To implement changes, click the Submit button. 
Then, navigate to the Dashboard tab and use the VPN section to confirm that VPN Up Down displays a green triangle symbol. Steps 8 through 11 are only necessary if you are configuring the gateway for a system where the cellular network is used in conjunction with a SpeedNet radio network. If you are not, skip ahead to step 12. Step 8. Navigate to the Network tab and select the Bridge screen. Change the bridge configuration by entering the IP address assigned to the gateway in the IP address box. Click Submit. The IP address entered is the private IP address of the bridge. Step 9. Now, navigate to the Wired tab and access the Ethernet 2 screen. Change the mode setting to Bridge and click Submit. Make the same change on the Ethernet 1 screen. Note that the change in IP address will interrupt communication between the PC and Gateway. Using the new IP address of the bridge, access the Gateway login screen and log in to the Gateway to continue with the configuration procedure. Step 10. Through the Network tab, access the Routes screen and change the default route setting to VPN. Step 11. Add a route for each SpeedNet radio on the private wireless network that is remote from the gateway by completing the following. A. Click the Add button to start a new route. B. In the destination column for the route, enter the IP address for the subnet that traffic on the SpeedNet radio network should reach. And accept by clicking the green box. Note that the destination setting must be compatible with the net mask setting for the route. C. Change the interface setting to bridge. D. In the gateway column, enter the IP address of the radio that will transmit traffic over the private wireless network. Click Submit to accept the changes. Now repeat this process for each SpeedNet radio on the private wireless network that is remote from the gateway. Step 12. If the power plug was disconnected when connecting DC power to the gateway, reconnect it now. Disconnect the Ethernet cable connected to Ethernet port 1 of the gateway and reinsert any Ethernet cables removed earlier. Step 13. Skip to Step 14 unless the gateway is being used in a system where the cellular network is used in conjunction with a SpeedNet radio network. Otherwise, configure the SpeedNet radio. For more details, see SNC's documentation for the SpeedNet radio. After completing configuration of the SpeedNet radio, Confirm that an Ethernet cable connects the radio to Ethernet port 1 of the gateway. Step 14. Following the instructions in the manufacturer's documentation for your automation device, configure the control of your device to communicate with the gateway and complete any final steps needed to put the gateway into service with your device. Next, we'll check gateway and private wireless network device communication to do this, we'll use the PC. Confirmation that each Interruptor fault interrupter is capable of communicating over the cellular network is provided by establishing a remote connection to the Interruptor fault interrupter through SNC IntelliLink. This will require that our PC has persistent Internet Protocol version 4 routes capable of directing traffic to the IP addresses of the Interruptor fault interrupter controls. These can be added by using the PC's command prompt. To make the remote connection, use the IP address that was assigned to the Interruptor Fault Interrupter control. When using the cellular network in conjunction with a SpeedNet radio network, carry out the following steps to confirm that the Interruptor Fault Interrupter is able to communicate with the other Interruptor Fault Interrupters connected to the SpeedNet radio network. Step 1. 
use the Communication Tests tab to navigate to the Ping and Serial Tests sub-tab. Step 2. In the IP address box, enter the IP address of the Ethernet port of the radio on the route being tested. Click on the Run Ping Test box to test the route. The results of the test will appear in the results box. Repeat the ping test for all the SpeedNet radios on the private wireless network that are remote from the gateway. After all gateway routes are working properly, the process of confirming communication over the cellular and SpeedNet radio networks is repeated for each interrupter fault interrupter. With this example, you should have a better understanding of how to configure the SpeedNet cell edge gateway to enable monitoring and control of automation devices. Further and more specific information can be found on our instruction sheets and on snc.com.